Welcome to the Honest Designers Show, your transparent look into life as a modern designer. My name's Tom Ross, and I'm the founder at designcuts.com. And this week, I'm joined by fellow Brit and expert and letterer, Ian Barnard, American retro design expert, Dustin Lee, and the always talented South African illustrator, Lisa Glantz. In this week's episode, we chat about the challenges of learning new creative skills. Specifically, Dustin has been trying his hand at illustration, but running into some roadblocks with the new process. If you're considering trying a new creative skill on for size, but you're scared about becoming a novice again in a new area, then this is the episode for you. Let's get into the show. So this week, we're helping our dear friend, Dustin Lee, who is currently looking to get into a new medium of creativity. He's looking to shift slightly away from his retro roots and get into drawing and illustration. So first of all, look out, Lisa. You've got some competition here gunning for you. (laughs) It's brilliant. (laughs) Healthy competition. Um, But yeah, really this week, I think this is something that applies to a lot of creatives because we naturally want to be making stuff. And I think that goes hand in hand with exploring new mediums and trying new things and not being stuck in a rut. So I know I've experienced this where I get bored with a certain skill set and I'm like, oh, but I want to try this. Yeah. And so, Dustin, you're you're currently in this mindset, right? Like, what what is it? Is it a scratch you or an itch you need to scratch, if I could speak properly? <laughs> um, yeah. Where, 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 where is this coming from? Well, a lot of it's coming from you guys because I hang out with you every week. And so I'm always seeing Lisa drawing and seeing Ian doing curse, you know, not cursive, hand lettering. And I just see so I get so much stuff from people that I think is so cool. That's just different types of drawings and this retro stuff that Retro Supply does. And I really want to get into it, but I'm like, keep having false starts because I can't keep it fun. Like I ruin it for myself with stress or I'm not sure how to do something new do you put too much pressure on yourself to to be perfect the first time i mean is that what's what's killing it i think i want to output something that i want to be able to sit down for like an hour or two hours and output something that's like satisfies me like gives me like i feel good about and so i'm not sure how to do that and i also like i just don't know how to incrementally build so i'm enjoying it i don't want to it to be a dry, boring thing. I want it to be a fun thing. Kind of gotten to a point in my life where I'm like, that's. I just want it to be enjoyable while I do it. No more doing stuff that I hate for, you know, there's like the 10,000 hour rule. I'm like, no, I'm not doing 10,000 hours <laughs> of hating this. And then like at the end of that, I can be happy that it was like, that I'm good yeah. at it. No. So what's no, destroying the fun for you? Why, why don't you actually not worry about getting better at all and literally do it for the fun? I think part of it is that like, I want to post it somehow, but I feel... Like I love retro supply and I love the retro thing. And I feel like this pressure like of everybody watching if I put things out maybe, or Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't explain it. No, I get it. Are you, are you also trying to marry the ideas of enjoyment and progression? Cause they're very different things. So if you're wanting to enjoy it and get better at the same time, there can be a bit of friction there, right? Definitely. Yes, and that's what I want. I want. I don't want <laughs> friction. I just want to enjoy it while I do it. Mm-hmm. Well, when when you sit when you sit down to to start your illustration or whatever, do you have a goal in mind? What what do you, what is your process when you start? Because I'm thinking maybe that might be the issue. I feel like it's been I've been doing the, you know retro supply for so long that I feel like I've forgotten how to learn almost. Um, so typically when I start, I just see something that inspires me and I try to do like my own little version of it. Okay. Or a lot of times, like what I've been doing is just like, I'll sit down and just draw objects, things around me, like just random things like from my life, Brilliant. Like little, almost like little journal entries of just mm. artifacts from my life. Brilliant. So That's excellent. yeah. Yeah. And then I've started using like yellow sticky notes because they're really small and I found that I can draw something on it really easily with a really fine... Um, sharpie pen 
Yeah. And then it's done. Like you can only fill up so much room on it and you're finished, which has, that has actually helped because like a gigantic piece of paper is intimidating. Yeah. Um, are, you, so, yeah. Um, are, you, are you keeping those stickies? Because that's really important. You've got to keep everything you do. You really, really do. Okay. If, yeah. yeah. Make a little scrapbook maybe. So hopefully mm. you can look back in three months or six months and almost it's like a stop animation thing. What a brilliant idea would be is having a, a separate channel for your, uh, you know, say for instance, a separate Instagram channel and each post is just one of those stickies, you know, one of those post-it notes, you know, just on a like maybe black or white background. And that would just, you know, just seeing a progression through those post-it notes, like you could call it, yeah. you know, post-it notes, illustrations or post-it note doodles. And then... That's a cool idea. Uh, like for me, my experience, my first loading, you know, I was using Instagram for my own personal use when I first started it because I was just wanting, because you need that reference to see if you're getting better um, and to encourage yourself, you know, because other people around you might go, you know, depending on where their level is, you know, if you're learning something new that no one else around you knows how to do, then they just think your stuff's, you know, good. And that doesn't really help you get better because you're like, oh, they think it's great. But in terms of the quality, it's not that great because they can't see um, where the errors are and where you're needing to develop. So whereas, you know, when you use, uh, you know, something like Instagram as a photo recording, you know, recording yourself over stages, you can, because the best thing to do is self-critique, I find, you know, okay, where could I improve in this? Where could I improve in that? Because then you can get better, uh, you know, not having to keep asking people, oh, what could I do here or what could I do there? It's just keep going through, okay, you know, I could have tweaked that, I can tweak that. But I think it'd be a great way of just, you know, I've got to do one post-it a day, do your post-it, you know, take a photo of it, put it on Instagram, and then, you know, just keep doing it that way. And I think over you know, a few months, you'll realize you're one, you're getting better. There might be people who love your, um, you know, post-it note doodles and they follow you for seeing your process because people love seeing process and they love seeing where you've begun and where you're going to, you know, they can see the progression and people love that. They find that really encouraging, really helpful. So not only would be helpful for you, it'd be helpful for other people to see that here's someone starting from, uh, you know, a small level, no offence, <laughs> you know, just no, no, no. <laughs> entry <laughs> level. Uh, you're still better than mine, your illustrations. Um, but I don't know about that. <laughs> but, you know, just seeing from the start and then working your way through, people love to join you on the journey. So um, yeah. that that's what I'd recommend as one thing you could do with it. And it would, put, it would give it part of your routine. So however long you got, you know, you can, as long as you've got a post-it to show at the end of that, period of time mm. so two two questions about that yep or related to that one how long do i do is it like an, enough time in, a, in each day to actually acquire a little bit or get a little bit more better like i could do a little post it really quick I could, like i did like 10 of them the other night so how much time should i spend each day that's reasonable when you're like also running a business and doing other stuff and the second part is when you started doing this, you were running Vintage Design Co. Oh, that was before that. It was, I was, I was, because I'd only just left and gone full time freelance. I was just getting anything. I was doing web design, I was doing uh, brochures and, uh, you know, flyers and business cards and stuff like that. I hadn't started doing any side projects at that time. I think like my thought behind it is, Vintage Design Co. was getting kind of big. Like you were pretty popular on Creative Market, still are popular, but you're Ian Bernard now. Did you feel a pressure like that? Like I feel like because my site gets a lot of traffic and all that, did you feel a pressure? Like, did you know, like, oh, I'm not that great at lettering as you were doing it? And did you feel a a pull about putting it out there when you were already doing other stuff that a lot of people were looking at? Um, I think it's I I was it was all of the sort of similar points. There was I was beginning at all of these things. It wasn't like I was really well known for doing this, and so I was bringing this up at the side. Um, the only thing that has come along later was type design, and 
that was but then I had I suppose the experience of the lettering so it wasn't I was just coming into it completely beginning I'll tell you one mm-hmm. thing that's not actually related to the lettering but it's actually related to something that I do on a regular basis every day I make a coffee with my coffee machine and I try and do some latte art yeah mm-hmm. I've seen this and I've seen it like progressing progressing it goes and it goes it can go up and it can go down and it can just be a splodge but people really appreciate it. Where are you posting this? I'd want to see this. It's, it's all on Instagram stories because it's oh, then it yeah. doesn't. And that's one way you can do it because, like, I don't. My feed is purely lettering, and it would just seem random just to have somebody some latte art. I might even, you know, set up a different channel just for bad latte art. But <laughs> <laughs> that's the name right there. Yeah, that is, I was going to say that's the handle. <laughs> and the fun thing about Instagram stories is that it's a little bit rough and ready. Mm. I follow that so fast. Sorry. Please register that in bad <laughs> latte art if it's not taken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you should though, absolutely. And I, I think you kind of need to take your own advice here and the advice all of us give on this show by just doing something. Like if this just petered out as an interest, obviously you're not going to get better. But if you set up an Instagram and you did a one post to every day, in six months or a year, you will have learned so much about illustration because you'd get bored if you did the same thing every single day. So you would start experimenting and trying different things and you would naturally just get a lot better, I think. One tip I would say is perhaps try and put some of your personality or some kind of narrative behind it because some of the most prolific people I follow on Instagram, um, I I forget her name now, but there's a, a, a woman who lives in New York and she does almost these very like basic child like illustrations, but they're really quirky and well done. And she put like um, satirical stuff about politics and stuff about mm-hmm. um, gender imbalance and being a woman in the city and uh, depression and mental health and all of like these big issues, but done in like quite a quirky childlike way with little mm-hmm. uh, text anima- text annotations next to them. And they're so relatable. They've just got incredibly popular. And everyone's like, oh, like this is my life and and that kind of thing. So instead of just drawing like a stapler and putting it on a post-it note, (laughs) it would be like giving that stapler some kind of character or you start to actually draw something from your imagination instead of it being in front of you. And and you start to actually put the stuff that you care about in your own life into your drawings, whether Mm -hmm. that's serious issues or like trivial stuff or funny stuff that happened in your day or whatever. That that makes perfect sense to me. I, I just seen yesterday. Um, are you guys familiar with the comedian Dimitri Martin? I think is his name. No. Mm-mm. He's a he's a um, um, American comedian. And anyways, he put out a book, and it was just these very like you're saying childish drawings. But he's a comedian, so he had very interesting insights mm-hmm. behind the drawings. It wasn't that they were fantastic. It was just that the insight behind it added a whole meatiness. Yeah. To it so yeah that sounds like a good idea here's another idea so i want to bring i want to bring you some stuff that you could do with it like so give yourself a year which is a long time it's 365 post-its but make sure you take a really good quality picture of each one and then at the end of the year you know have it and each one has that little sort of story make a book with you know each of those you know 365 days in a book and each one has its own little mini story with it that would make us such a fantastic um read because you one you see your progression and uh you know it's entertaining seeing why you dro- chose to draw that drawing every day and just people mm-hmm. love things that go you know people who persist for that long you know I don't know if you remember when uh bob ewing was doing his uh uh th- you know 365 days of lettering and yes. you know just how good he got over that period of time and just how many people mm. were following him because of that, you know, hashtag lettering or if it was, I think it was called. And it, and he kept on going because it was just such a, um, you know, people were just excited by his everyday, you know, just be a sketch or it might, you know, it might be, a, you know, a bit more of a refined drawing, but it was just that daily yes. process. Yeah, because I find when I see you, you put stuff out, quite regularly almost every day i feel like in twitter or somewhere i'll see a a video of something you've done and i enjoy the same thing from tom when you you know you'll do your instagram talks and they're very impromptu but you'll share something about your day or 
I think that's part of why a lot of people come back to retro supplies because every week something comes out and we send an email out. Mm -hmm. And I think that almost is kind of gives you like, you know, that coworker effect where you're around someone and you keep seeing their things and mm. you kind of, they just become like a little person that you have a relationship <laughs> with in a little way every day because yeah, exactly. there's Ian doing yep. his little thing. Here's Tom doing his little thing. And that, I don't mean that in a diminishing way. I just mean like, you know, <laughs> you're seeing like a little part of everyone's life. <laughs> that that yeah. sounds like my, my best friend just to be a d sometimes. He's like, oh, how's it going with your little internet? Like, <laughs> and I'm like just really patronizing. <laughs> Um, I, I do like the idea of it being some kind of visual journal, though, because yeah. if you looked back and you, and you turned it into a book or had it on Instagram or whatever, if you could look back and be like, oh, that's when uh, we completed building our house or it's our wedding anniversary or mm. my kid did something amazing or just that was the day I was actually super upset about something. But I look back and actually now I'm totally fine. Just. I don't know. I love the idea of capturing those moments over the course of a year. Mm, mm. That's important. I love the idea, but I get so intimidated, I think, because I feel like Retro Supply has excelled at doing what it does. And it's become a, a, a pretty polished you know, business. So to go out and do something poorly and then regularly put it out feels punishing. And I don't know <laughs> how to get around it. You still have the Retro Supply over here. And on the other side is, you know, it's not going to be on that. Because for me personally, I wouldn't say put it on your retro supply feed. Maybe advertise it via, you know, Instagram story. Say, come over to this channel. You know, come over to this feed. This is what I'm going to be doing. Um, and, you know, people just love seeing someone they know start again and do something different. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. it's yeah. I think people appreciate the fact that you are new and trying and... I mean, every person on earth starts somewhere, you know, no yeah. matter how good they are now, they started somewhere. So I think people love that stuff. I think they can mm -hmm. appreciate it and they'll connect with it. And I don't, I don't think you must worry about not being good in, enough because even though, I mean, the drawings that you showed us early on, I know you say, look at them, they're so basic, whatever. But we're, all of us, we're already kind of warmed you know like we were impressed by them so it's it's just your own uh, they, they had a great style to them. yeah yeah exactly e e I, simple form i'm not a big fan of realistic drawings because it's i find it, it lacks, loses yeah yeah this this personality that's lacking and, and so i mean mm -hmm. if you if you can when i guess of the only i mean the biggest advice i can give you because if i can compare because i know exactly how you feel I mean, there's the whole pressure that you have on yourself that when you sit down you want you have this impression in your mind what you want the end result to be and then when it's not you get so frustrated and then you, why are you wasting your time you're so crap you got so long to go and you know all this kind of stuff um you've got what what actually kind of changed in my mind and it is literally a decision you have to make and really work at it is that you have to concentrate on I know this sounds so, so cliched I can't explain it any other way but the process because almost be in awe or enjoying the fact that wow that line that i put down it's that looks like this and you know that's not too bad and then kind of work or build on that and instead of aiming for the end rather really physically aim to focus on the middle or, or while you're doing it so when the end result happens go okay well it didn't really quite work out the way i wanted to i'll start again or start something else so you, you you let go of that that intense pressure that you put on yourself for getting like a masterpiece out, and rather yeah. focus on like literally like each stroke you make, each shape you make, each whatever you make, you know. And I know it is hard; it's easier said than done. But if you really focus on that while you're doing it, it it makes it easier, and the process get becomes more relaxed. And before you know it, you're like that's how you draw now, because that's how I draw now, and, and I never used to. I used to be seriously tense and and <laughs> and it shows in your work if you if you tense so mm. yeah it's, it's hard though i think about it think about it as rather than you're getting better that you're just developing your style because then that would yeah. just take off the weight of like oh i'm not a good mm. like you know because everyone can like you know everyone can letter it's but you know how do you how do you think that someone's better than someone else? Because you know you have a certain style, and you know some people you might look at and you think that's not a good lettering, but it's their style. You know, so it's right. yeah. 
Yeah. I think he's more about yeah, that. I've noticed that sometimes you'll see letter lettering work and it's it's not particularly hard how they I'm I'm like I could copy that and it would look exactly like it. But the fact that they have a body of work that just has that personality so consistently yeah. Yeah. makes it That's what makes special. it impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And and uh, Dustin, do you is it is it the fact that you physically struggle to translate like what you see in front of you onto paper or is it from your mind onto paper or is, are you struggling with like technique, like the basics of drawing or are you struggling with, no, I can't I mean, find I was, my style. I studied visual art in school and I, I understand the basics of the, vi- you know, visual art and constructing things and things like that. But so, and that's actually a problem for me. Cause like, I feel like my obligation is to, okay, you should sketch it out with a pencil first. And if you're, drawing of you know like a person you need to do these proportions this way and oh, make yeah, the lines okay. to mark you know like oh. way down the face where the eye should go and stuff and <laughs> yeah. i hate doing it and then like after that then like you don't could like ink it. it out and then once you ink it out like bring it into illustrator i'm like i don't want to do that i honestly just want to get the pen and freaking draw like oh then do, do it. that then like follow what like, you can enjoy. you do that is that okay Absolutely, that's what I do. I mean, I don't sit and like work out proportions. Yeah, and shapes anatomically and... correct bunnies. Like... No, never, <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. Yeah. But can I just start with a pen, or do I have to yes. start with a pencil, In or do fact... I have to scan it into Illustrator? And I, I think I've forced myself into like a little prison. Yeah, I think it sounds like it because I, I was, I'm just thinking back when I first started doing a lot of work to get better. I used to force myself to only draw with pen because then you can't judge yourself because you, you can't rub out a pen line, yeah. you know. So, you you know, once it's on the page, it's on the page. So, you it, it, that that's actually a brilliant exercise because you have to let go then. You've got no choice. Um, so, I would actually say ditch the pencil. And, what, do you draw with a pen? or? Well, I now draw with a pencil, um, but – but back then when I was still kind of getting into, you know, being more free about the whole process, um, definitely the uh, picking up a pen is the way to go. It's permanent. You can't argue with yourself. You can't debate issues. <laughs> you just have to do it, you know? So. And you know this, Dustin. I feel like we're, we're kind of mollycoddling you here because you're a smart guy. <laughs> I never heard that phrase. And what does that mean? <laughs> it's like we're being like overly sensitive and tiptoeing around instead of just being straight with you because I oh. think – a lot of the advice we're giving you <laughs> is what you would give to a listener asking this question. So I think deep down, you know, this stuff, you've got to just pull the trigger and, and go for it. Well, the thing is when I started, ret- I mean, retro supply, I started before retro supply started, I was doing that kind of work and not as good. It was, you know, at first horribly done and then a little better done. And then event- even when I started the shop, the shop was okay. And then it kind of progressed and got better and better. So I know it after the fact, but it's kind of like you've been through like this slightly brutal war with yourself as you built the business. And so you're there. And when someone asks, you can say, well, this is what it was like. This is what you got to do. And then when you're doing it again, you're like, you're a a human being with emotions about it. You're like, I know. Oh, I know what's to come. And uh, I kind of deep inside know some of the stuff you're saying. And some of it is helpful that I literally don't know. Mm. But it's so hard. Like, yeah, it is. Your your emotions stop you. When you just do it, like you mentioned the Instagram videos I started putting out. And I've told you guys, I think the first one took me an hour to an hour and a half of sitting on my bed and being genuinely like incredibly nervous and recording a hundred different versions and, and beating myself up mentally about it. And once you've done not even 50, but like 20 of those, you don't care. It's like, oh, whatever. Like I'm doing the same thing again today. And it just yeah. becomes a habit. So you mm. talked about 10,000 hours. That is quite an intimidating concept. But if you think about just doing 20 post-it notes for the next 20 days or like say a month's worth, like you'll be fine. If you do it every day for a month, you won't even be in this headspace anymore. It will just be something that you do every day and and your mind will naturally gravitate towards a lot of the stuff which will lead to progression, I think. Mm. Part of me feels like two after just like even like a couple and putting them up. The wall will be broken. Yeah, definitely. yeah, <laughs> it will. Just, just get started. It's like this. It's like my daughter. It's like my daughter with a shot. Like it's way worse. You know, thinking the build about up. It than getting the yeah, shot. Yeah, the build yeah. up is worse than the actual act. Always. Not like awesome. an alcoholic shot, right? Just to clarify. <laughs> no, like I'm talking about my little daughter. <laughs> okay, you're not you're not pl- no. buying your young daughter with tequila or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, although those are the same for adults. 
<laughs> the actual shot is oftentimes not as bad as the oh no yeah. <laughs> speak yeah. for yourself i hate yeah. tequila <laughs> I, i'm really excited for you dustin or we're excited to see it because i'll be one of the first followers so I, I was going to say, yeah, you've got at least three likes and comments Definitely. per yeah. illustration right here. Wait, maybe that's what's making it hard is that I hang out with you guys. Uh, <laughs> we are pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, because I have like people like that are like some of the best people in the world, the stuff they're doing. And you're like, OK, these people will be will witness my. my I, no, because if you, we all support you. <laughs> I'm joking, that. I know. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, do you have any tips for process? Like, I don't, I guess I feel like I'm trying to do something totally different. So I have a process for retro supply and we have a whole way we do everything for that, but I don't even like my process feels like, I feel like a kid. I just want to sit down and just draw stuff. I yeah, do like awesome think that night. putting a narrative is important, but is there more to my process or what are some like important things I can do to, to grow i feel like just by myself drawing things to start a well, new style is lacking something structured i would actually revel in a lack of process and a lack mm. of pressure because you're used to running a business and i know what that's like firsthand there's a thousand moving parts there's like so much responsibility as you just said you feel like a kid so you enjoy that. Why are you trying to turn it into something that is inherently stressful? Like straight away, you can't like instead of just drawing, you're like, okay, so I'm I'm gonna set up like a master business plan for these little post-it note <laughs> illustrations, and you're taking it to that next level and applying all this undue pressure. It's like I'll tell you what the process is: pick up a pen, pick up a post-it note, and draw on it, and <laughs> yeah. and and, that, and that's all you need to do. And so don't treat it like a second business. Treat it as an escape from the day-to-day -day pressures of your actual business and just some fun thing you do on the side that doesn't have to be anything big. It's just an outlet. I totally, totally yeah. echo that because um, I don't know if you guys have the same thing. When you first started designing, it was so exciting and amazing and wonderful. And then, you know, the longer you started, you know, the longer you did it, it became like a chore in a way. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So... I always think back, I wish I could harness that feeling that you had back then when you first started out, yes. um, you know, and keep it forever. So, I mean, Tom is absolutely spot on. You've got to really enjoy this and, and, and love every minute of it because you're in that phase that we all want to keep forever, you know. So I'm jealous. Just think of yeah, yeah. I'm think really of it jealous. in ways. I, it's like a, it's a, it's a fun thing. It's play. It's, you know. I miss, I miss that so much because. Yeah. It's it's that honeymoon phase of the, of the new relationship where everything is just amazing. You know? I can't remember the last yeah. time I did art just for the fun of it. It's yeah. always yeah. like part of a project. Yeah, it's hard. It's when, when, when your hobby becomes your full-time income, yeah. it completely changes your mindset on how you do it. Because sometimes like, you know, you're like, oh, I have to do this to earn some money now. And it's like sometimes you, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing because you just like, Sometimes it just doesn't connect, and you're like, "Oh, well, I made the right decision to uh, to go full time with this sort of thing." But I think it, the, the bonuses outweigh the when it gets negative. But I think it's just part of the. Because one thing I found hard, just general graphic design, was switching off because I always thought about it. Mm. Yeah, um, but now it's like even harder because it's just it's so merged in with everything I do, and um yeah it just yeah it's hard to switch it off i suppose and it, sometimes what's quite nice is actually like um when i did that illustration of the uh the floral ampersand because it took me like eight to ten hours <laughs> to do it meant i completely switched off from like lettering because it was more of an illustrative thing it took mm. so long to do it that my i didn't watch tv and i didn't think about lettering and so it was just it was quite a nice escapism from my sort of normal job and just constantly thinking and constantly responding to yeah sort of social Did you media do in your office or were like you at the kitchen table while I just, people yeah, were doing I stuff around you there was there was a point my wife helped me to reduce that down to <laughs> eight to ten hours um <laughs> but we were just uh, both sitting at the table like she was going to have an early night the other night and she was just like but i want to help you and so she was doing one part of it because it was like a three size 
I was doing one part of it. You know, we just had the, awesome. had our micron, you know, markers out, just <laughs> like going over dot 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 dot. dot, dot. Yes. Um, can and, and can it, I give you guys a? Um, I think this is a winning business idea along the same lines, Ian. Um, do you remember at school? My favorite thing was when you went in the art room and uh, they had endless kind of crates and boxes full of art supplies. And it was mm. everything from like glitter to bits of foam my to ever. cardboard, like like the coolest room in the world, right? And yeah. I think they should make an adult version of that where creative people like us who want to escape the pressure of doing it for a living just go to this room and go nuts and like chuck paint around and do <laughs> finger painting. Yes. And, so, and like, you know, you get adult um, soft play and stuff like that, where it's like the big um, obstacle course. Yeah, where it's all like oh, yeah. padded stuff, and normally you take your kids, but there's one for adults. Mm -hmm. We need that, like an adult art room where you so can true. just <laughs> just go nuts. Well, because yeah. like I remember being in high school, I went to a, a an art magnet school, and so I spent our all our mornings were spent, um, or our mornings were academic, and then for like four or five hours in the afternoon, we focused on art. So we had to do dance and drawing and painting and music and you would do it and you'd make things and you'd be ambitious, but it was easier because you weren't like, Oh gosh, I hope the client like likes this and will pay me. Mm. Or I hope this will be successful. <laughs> you just knew like that you were a high school student. And like, if something failed, you were just like a high school student that didn't do it, that did a bad project. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I made some great stuff. I mean, I made some, some totally horrible stuff, but I made some great <laughs> stuff too. Like here's, here's a comparison though, Dustin, you remember doing it at school and when you're in preschool or primary school, um, you're not really graded on it. And that's like the dream era. That's where you're at right now with your drawing um, in terms of the lack of pressure. But I, I remember in the early days, you'd sit and like play with Lego all day or you'd create amazing drawings or art or whatever simply for the, the fun of doing it and just to pick mm. it up and learn it at that early age. And suddenly when you're at, a level age which I, I don't know what you call that in the states but basically when you're like 16 to 18 uh you're doing it because you need to get a good grade to get into university and the whole thing becomes much more pressured so i i, re I actually miss um not only not doing it professionally but i miss that kind of pre-graded pre-judgment mm -hmm. era where it's like just literally having fun like being a kid with it yeah yeah and and the other thing that's that's great about you doing this and i actually think i wish more people would do it um for this reason is that it actually teaches you how to remove yourself from yourself <laughs> okay that sounded weird <laughs> um, it, it teaches you to remove yourself from the creative process um to get better results because that's i mean that's been my biggest challenge i have to say as an as since i've been doing this full time illustrating is to, is to actually literally remove my uh, critical brain from the process so i can actually do better work because if you the minute your critical brain is present, then you actually start, you know, you don't perform the way you should because you start questioning, oh, they won't like it or this person's not going to like it or what if it ends up like that? And so mm -hmm. things aren't natural anymore. They don't flow naturally anymore. They start becoming um, calculated and the end result is not as good, I think. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing that you, you're doing this for, you know, a whole lot of other reasons, but that's another one. It's brilliant. Yeah, that makes sense. I the more I think about it, I think it's almost like the the challenge isn't really the drawing. The challenge is teaching yourself. Yeah. The challenge is teaching yourself to enjoy something and do it without all the restrictions and judgment you put on yourself. Yeah. Like the 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 art is almost secondary to the ability exactly. to chant change that way you think. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I mean, because if you think about it, adults we we have to. To protect ourselves, we have to be critical, to you know, self-critical, to to get better in a lot of ways. But when it comes to creating, that actually is is quite a hindrance. So it's yeah, it's a very good exercise to do. And something mm. that you have to do is do a long, a lot, not a long, but a period of time trying it out because you go through the hot highs and lows over a period of time, and you find out what you do mm. enjoy about it, what you don't enjoy about it, and yeah. And sometimes I think, you know, giving yourself a, like a year is a really amazing thing to do because, one, it gives you um, that sort of 
sort of willpower and staying power for that year of being you know mm. consistent and sticking to it and I mean, at the end you have so many things that you can share with other people you have the experience of doing that you have the catalog of all that um time you, you know you have that story uh you know you you have multiple things you can do with it and you can write a post like what i've learned with posting every day for 365 days i've i haven't posted every day i you know i don't post at the weekends and sometimes mm-hmm. i miss a day or two here so you know you would experience something that n- none of us would have experienced which is a daily mm-hmm. posting so and it would inspire others as well it's not you know it's the, the things we put on the internet don't just stay with us. It's something that other people will see as well. So Definitely. Uh, it would inspire right. me if you did this. Mm, me Definitely. too. I'd be so impressed. And we can add pressure on. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, you, if, if you want pressure, set it up and then we'd plug the hell out of it on the show. <laughs> get, <laughs> get you some followers. Actually, it does help to have that. Well, and one of my favorite stories from us talking is I always love thinking about the story Ian told about when he was starting lettering and he didn't like watching Downtown Abbey. So he decided that he'd just spend a half an hour every night or I don't know, the time that it took to watch an episode of Downtown Abbey yeah. practicing lettering. Because it just, isn't, <laughs> does, isn't it does. funny when you try so hard, things don't seem to work out. And like when you like just are like, I don't want to watch Downtown Abbey. Uh, um, so I'll draw d- while Dustin, I do it. Dustin, sorry, I have to... <laughs> I, I'm pretty. It's Downton Abbey, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, wait, it's amazing. It's amazing. You, you, how... you keep saying downtown. Yeah. Which, what, what which sounds down, like down, downton. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's a place. But I think. I, I I I would much prefer that it was downtown. It's like some <laughs> some like ghetto <laughs> version think, of Downton Abbey. The second you know how many times I've said this right? to people and call it Downtown Abbey, it's Downton. Yeah. There's yeah. no there's no W in the second part of the word. So it's like, like T O N, but a Downton down T O N. Oh, my mind's just been blown. Okay, uh, like Downton. <laughs> they, they, they need to make that as a remake, though. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Uh, that's so weird. Um, Downton Abbey. But shame we can't do like voice gifs. You know, like animated gifs. Yeah, like <laughs> Dustin <laughs> going downtown <laughs> Abbey, and then my brain like exploding with the universe coming out of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a, but, there's um, a good post. Anyways, because yeah, like that's how things start, right? Like yeah. I remember when I did Retro Supply, I was just getting up really early because I was desperate to make a business because my daughters were being born, and I was intentional, but I was also so desperate. I was like, I don't care. I just don't care. I have to put stuff out. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Mm-hmm. I'm just making stuff because I have to. Yeah. Um. But like, it turned off the judgment part. And it sounds like for Ian, he's like, he's like, I just need to get through this Downton Abbey. <laughs> nice. And like, I just need to get through that. And I'll just let her like as a, as a bridge across this like horrible show. I, I love my it. wife actually loves the show, but. <laughs> oh, it's delightful. Um, so is, <laughs> so British. Are, are, delightful. Are, there, are there any other things which alleviate the pressure? So, so um yeah, you're saying actually pressure from other areas alleviates the pressure on yourself. So if you have financial pressure, you might feel less pressured about the learning process. But yeah. are there any nicer things we can do other than stress ourselves out to feel less pressure <laughs> in the process? I think that Ian's perspective of shifting it to your finding your style as opposed to trying to get good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But if you look at, you know, if you're easy. the master, like, the thing is, I I just struggle with perfecting anything because I I think I mentioned on the last the last show is that I I struggle with big projects. So um, actually, no, this is something I mentioned in my talk I did last week. They said, "Oh, would you?" I was doing it all about type design, and someone asked me from the audience, "Would you ever do like a a full uh, typeface with I know." Uh, like a dozen different weights and mm. you know styles oh. and you know to, oh, and I no, said no probably not because I just don't have the enthusiasm for bigger projects right and I'm a very much a small project guy because I I have to do I have short bursts of say for instance for the click fee thing I did six months of like daily practice um because I got obsessive over that small chunk and then I had to do something else. 
So for my, I, you know, I was still doing the click fee, but the other thing was that was when I started my shop and like the vintage designs and stuff. So that became my obsession. I was still doing the click fee as well, but my obsession became that for a while. <laughs> so uh, you're very good at your like flitting your attention around. Yeah. So my obsession, mm. at, you know, so like YouTube is another obsession at the moment. Um, and what else is. Yeah, it's just it just flits. I notice you're very much like me in the in the sense that well, I think we're all in ways like this. Maybe Tom a little less so because he has to think bigger, a lot more long term for the business. But I, we're all kind of like a project can only be so big before I need to be able to wrap it up in a week or two. Yeah, you know, that's me to do it because I feel like if you did a twelve, like a twelve font typeface or whatever, like I feel like by the end of it, your hair would be like sticking out everywhere and like. <laughs> Like you'd have like this big beard and like you'd kind of slightly have lost your mind. He looked like Doc from Back to the Future. Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like it would just like ruin, like destroy you. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, that's how I feel after a portrait creator update, me. I must be honest. Because yeah. <laughs> that's. Yeah. Same. Sometimes I see those and I'm like, ooh. It's... No, she must have to drink a lot of wine to get through this. Yeah. Well, we, we know that's true. In fact, where is the wine today, Lisa? I know. I'm, I'm pretty good, eh? Yeah, Let's I'm surprised you're able to tolerate our company without <laughs> the application of alcohol. Okay, uh, can I can I just put one thing in that uh, in in Tom's words caveat? I still I don't understand particularly what that word means. Do I say caveat a lot? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah but I don't know what it. Don't know, you have to explain to us what it means because probably a lot of people don't know what it means. I, I probably don't know what it means either. Just say it <laughs> me, uh, meaning. <laughs> oh, can I put? There's one. Th- there's the thing though. Um. Uh, just a side issue with, uh, I think it's different. There's different, you know, if you're doing illustration for finding your style or a lettering for finding your style, then I think it's just putting stuff out there and just keep developing it. If you are Mm -hmm. trying to get a master of a certain, um, I'm just thinking that, if you learn something the wrong way and then practice for a year, you're going to get good at right. being doing it the wrong way that for Rush, the whole yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think mm-hmm. it relates to um, Dustin's thing because I think it's actually good that he doesn't have the, you know, you've got to do it this way. But I, just I, think- I know exactly what you mean. Ian. I did that same thing with guitar. Yeah. Where exactly. I am not a particularly good guitarist because I taught myself. I didn't really learn any of the correct theory. I would get stuck in ruts of stuff that I enjoyed rather than like pushing myself to actually properly learn arpeggios and scales and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's really like hampered me with progressing because like I say, I was stuck in a rut for like years and years and years, almost doing it the wrong way. And it's very hard to, hard to unlearn, but yeah. It depends on your goals kind of, cause I had been thinking about that before you said that about music and I was thinking, well, like for instance, you know, Nirvana, Kurt Cobain, is an absolutely um, horrible traditional guitarist if you were judging him on his technique. (laughs) It's just his technique is horrible. But (laughs) it made him into who he was and it was like amazing and beautiful Mm. because so much of him was transferred through that. Mm. Whereas if he had wanted to be, say, a flamenco guitarist, it probably would have really not helped him (laughs) (laughs) that he learned such horrible technique. So I guess it depends where you're trying to go with it in a lot of ways and you have to be sure that's where you want to go. Mm. yeah I, oh, and the, i think that's um yeah so that's your goal set but m- majority of the time i think it's actually developing your style is more important because people don't get you know if you do something that's perfect why are they going to choose you over someone else if you can do it perfectly you know they're mm. going to look exactly the same so so that's that's one issue that you don't actually want to go you know for, and i think and i i you know i i the people, some of the people I follow, I really like their style, and it may not be perfect. You can see the sort of faults in it, like we were just saying, but it's got so much of them in it, and it's got so much personality. And yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and like for instance, you know, if you're watching a certain channel on YouTube, it's not because there's some people I follow who are not the best at photography, who are not the best at you know high quality films, but it's just who they are is what yeah. and and the story and the connection with them yeah yeah so yeah dustin hopefully that helped anyway because 
I, I know we've jumped around a lot of things, but really you, you came to us this episode. We kept it old school. This is like original Honest Designers. I think before we even put the show out to the world, it started like a group therapy session, right? It, it was, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to placate us. Be brutally honest. Do you feel like today actually helped you with some thoughts about getting into drawing and the stuff you're struggling with? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the advice was great. And I think hearing from people that have excelled so much, like, it's almost just hearing permission mm. to not make it so hard on myself. The fruit of all it, this conversation so is if, are you going to post something at the end of the day? Are you going to set yeah, it up? That's it. Are, are you going to set up an Instagram and are all the listeners going to hold you accountable to that? Because I know <laughs> we're going to. Because <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, te- you know, if you do, we can then tease it over the week until it's released. Um, yep. And because obviously we can't now because we haven't got the the, um, the name, but we can tease it. Don't put your name on it. We can just tease it through Instagram stories. You know, yep. follow this. We'll tell you why. So. Do it. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I slightly want to vomit <laughs> thinking about it, but yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Be a shining uh, example for the dear listeners. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Make okay. a big audacious decision. You don't know how many yeah. people you will inspire from just literally you start. I agree. You're my Including hero, me. Dustin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. I will. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Nice. Well, good stuff, man. Can't wait to see it. And hopefully everyone listening uh, is feeling either motivated or terrified too if they're thinking about doing <laughs> yeah. something similar because yeah, Dustin's both, both looking a little good. green yeah, <laughs> yeah green totally. around the girls <laughs> yeah. it's a good thing I'm heading yeah. off to a doctor's appointment yeah <laughs> check that heart rate buddy <laughs> <laughs> nice right take care guys see you later bye. see you guys Ciao. bye Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. We hope that it showed you how learning a new skill doesn't have to be scary, but should really be embraced as something fun and interesting. As always, you can find full show notes over at honestdesigners.com or find us over on iTunes by searching for The Honest Designers Show. If today's episode helped you, then it would mean the world to us if you took just a moment to leave us a quick review over on iTunes, as this is one of the best ways for other designers to discover the show. Thanks again for tuning in, and we will see you next week right here on The Honest Designers Show.